Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the Sony 18 to 200 millimeter E mount series lens. Now, of course, this is designed for the Sony NEX line of cameras. Right now, I do have it attached to my Sony NEX7, which I cannot tell you enough good things about, but that's not what this video is about, so let's stick to the lens. So, right now, this is priced at $899.99, Sony did raise the price by $100. This debuted back in the summer for $799.99. If you followed any of my NEX coverage, then you know that I did use this lens almost exclusively through all of CES 2012. So if you want to see what video quality, uh, you know, performance is like, especially that was all being uh, filmed on the NEX 5N, then go ahead and take a peek. But basically, I'm here to tell you guys whether or not this lens is worth your time and, of course, your hard-earned money. So $900, why did the price go up? Let's talk about that first. I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that since Tamron, as well as other lens manufacturers, are bringing 18 to 200 millimeter lenses just like this, but not quite like it, which I'll get to in a moment in terms of performance, in a more compact frame, because as you can see, the barrel does extend out here, almost the same traditional, or same size as a traditional uh, zoom lens for a you know, digital SLR, not a compact one like this mirrorless, uh, you know, NEX7. So, what is the difference? Well, Sony, I think, had to believe that if a company like Tamron could offer an 18 to 200 mil, uh, millimeter lens for their product at a $739 price point, there was no reason that this lens, between its build quality, image quality, and video quality performance, really couldn't command a higher premium. And I think that, plus shortages, of course, because of the flooding in Thailand, shifting of manufacturing, this lens is still hard to come by. I think the price, you know, made its way up to $900. Now, I'm focusing in on the optical steady shot right here because that's the next thing I want to focus on here. Steady shot, obviously, something that can be found in all of Sony's lenses right now uh, for NEX cameras. However, this is the only lens to also feature the active steady shot mode, uh, an extra step for video uh, image stabilization as well. Still, very important, critical feature, something that differentiates this lens from all other NEX lenses, including, of course, the uh, Tamron 18-200, which isn't a Sony lens, but obviously does directly compete with this product and does undercut it still slightly, obviously more now that the Sony has gone up in price. This is clearly a lens designed for the person that doesn't want to have to swap lenses out, wants to have that flexibility of 18 to 200 millimeters, and it does a really good job. Image quality, fantastic. Video quality, even better. The only two things that I can really point out, uh, you know, besides obviously the lofty price point, uh, the bulk clearing away an issue. If you're moving into an NEX line of camera, whether it's the 7, the 5N, or any of the previous models, you really have to ask yourself, is it counterintuitive to be putting such a bulky lens? Because it isn't just large, folks. It's also built really well. It's all metal. So it is a heavy piece of equipment. So size is definitely an issue. The other thing is it is slightly slow to focus. Now, that is a caveat of pretty much any uh, long-range zoom like this lens. Uh, my 18-250 to that I used on my A700 for many years and was very pleased with, you know, definitely a faster lens than this, but, you know, it's really just a matter of what you're willing to give up in order to not have to swap lenses. This is a great traveling lens, great for tourists that want to be able to walk around, take shots, and not worry about having to swap out, you know, things like a kit lens, and then move to the 55 to 210, which is obviously the next option, and I want to bring that up because clearly at $900, far less expensive to get a kit lens included. Uh, in this case, the NEX7 is priced at $1,350 with the kit lens. Without, if you purchase the NEX7 body alone, you're looking at $1,199.99. So really worth paying the extra money, in my opinion, to get the kit lens. And if you do that, then you have the ability to pick up the Sony 55-210, to which does perform a little bit more quickly in the focusing department. As for image quality, I'll leave that to you guys to go on the web and basically take a look at performance. But in my opinion, they are very close. They both put out almost prime uh, performance, which is really impressive, especially from the 55 to 210, since that is a budget lens at $349.99. Another lens that is, unfortunately, really hard to find because it is manufactured in Thailand, of course, where uh, the flooding occurred 
and uh, still, you know, Sony is working their best to really get these products out there. They know how popular they are. Trust me, they're not trying to torture anyone. This is about trying to get, uh, you know, the entire region back on its feet. Forget about Sony's cameras. So, obviously, what it really comes down to is that if you're willing to swap lenses and work through dealing with the kit and the, you know, $350, 55 to 210 then you will accomplish you know, great stills and video across the board with those two uh, lenses. This, on the other hand, obviously, is the all-in-one. Uh, a lot of professional photographers out there that are moving to this system maybe as a backup or even as their primary now, I think, will not have a problem carrying a lens of this size uh, because, after all, they were accustomed to carrying something twice the weight, uh, at the very least, before moving to the NEX7. So that's, that's my personal stance on the lens. Of course, the other thing is the price, and that Unfortunately, it's tough for me to justify it because, in my mind, the only real advantage of this lens is that extra uh, image stabilization that I mentioned earlier in the video, which is clearly critical if you're going to be using this for, in my opinion, broadcast video or any kind of, you know, really high quality video. But otherwise, the kit lenses, uh, both the zoom lens I mentioned earlier, as well as the standard zoom, the 18 to 55, really do perform well despite missing that active steady shot. So, you know, what it really comes down to is whether or not you're ready to pony up that $900. Uh, in my opinion, it's going to be, uh, you know, a 50-50 split, and that really is going to be determined for you as a consumer based on what type of camera you're coming from. Again, if you're a professional, I think this is a very easy pill to swallow for a great performer uh, from 18 to 200. Of course, at the wide ends, extreme ends, I should say, both the wide and the end of the telephoto, you're not going to get perfect results, but through the balance of the range, this is definitely one of the best lenses out there right now for any NEX camera. And uh, on the 7, I can, I'm, you know, happily able to report that it does really leverage that full uh, sensor, in case uh, any of you are wondering. Uh, beyond, obviously, everything that I've mentioned, you know, it's really just a matter of how much weight you want to take on. A lot of users out there look at this lens and say, it's far too bulky, uh, and it's, you know, counter intuitive to using a compact mirrorless camera like the NEX7 5N or any of the other uh, less expensive models. I personally think that if you want to avoid uh, exposing your camera's sensor to the elements wherever you are, you know, taking your shots, whether you're on holiday or a professional, then this is a good way of keeping a lens on, you know, board all the time so you don't have to risk the elements getting to your sensor. But of course, that's what cleaning systems are for, and it's really just a matter of how much work you want to invest into, you know, in your system. Uh, if you're at this price point, then you should be pretty much hands-on, so, you know, swapping lenses shouldn't be a big deal, but again, this is a matter of personal preference. But wholeheartedly, I can tell you guys, the 18 to 200 is definitely a very good investment. Uh, the only way it wouldn't be a good investment is if Sony revises it within the next six months and puts out a much sleeker, uh, faster lens that has all the same features and more. But overall, I think that anyone who picks up this lens right now is going to be very pleased with the performance both on the still and video side. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later!